Hi, today I'm here in this beautiful azalea garden, uh, which is, as you can see, it's in full bloom right now. I just thought this might be a really nice place to do something. And uh, yeah, there's traffic just over there, so I hope the traffic noise isn't too big. And as you've probably realized, I'm making this video a little bit later than usual. Today, I want to talk to you about the Tresena of Achmach. I'm actually making the video on the day one Achmach. Now, part of that was something I kind of wanted to highlight in the video as well. Because it was like, you know, I wanted to make it for you yesterday so that you get it, so that you kind of like begin the Tresena with it and that kind of thing. But, you know, I had human things to do. So... I ask for your forgiveness for that, because this is what the Tresena of Achmach can be all about. It's about embracing all of those things that make us human. Now, I'm actually in the gardens of the Philadelphia Museum of Fine Art. And, of course, I think the arts are one of the things that brings out the best of humanity as well. And this is all part of that Achmach thing. It's, it's kind of like embracing all the things that we feel, all the things that we sense, all those sensual things that make us human. Sometimes distract us. Sometimes, let's say, pull us away from our responsibilities. Now, as I was thinking about Achmach last night and thinking about what I really wanted to say as well, is, you know, right now, our society, and maybe this has been such for a while, but I feel it's even more so right now, that it's pushing us towards this idea of perfection, that every word that we utter has to be carefully thought about before we utter it, in case, you know, kind of like we say something wrong, in case we come out with something in the wrong way. The way that we do things, the way that our image is presented online, offline, social media, around the place, and all that kind of thing. We've pushed ourselves into this box of perfectionism, which starts to get a little inhumane, non-human. Now, of course, there are certainly very, very good reasons for a lot of this and, you know, kind of like being kind to each other, looking after each other. This is a really important thing. But when we start to look at it from the point of view of our own image and from this point of view of perfectionism, how human can we be? How human does that make us? We are messy, we are imperfect, we are beautiful for all of those things. That's part of our story, is our wounds, our scars, our moments when we were less, perf less than perfect or the people around us were less than perfect. And it's understanding the embracing of those as well. That, for me, is what Achmach brings up. The, the essence of humanity is to embrace ourselves and others because of our imperfections. Because those are the things that make us interesting. Those are the things which are our story. Those are the things that individualize us. Because if we didn't have them, then we'd just be like little robots walking around following this pre-programmed routine. And so when we truly embrace what it is to be human, we truly embrace what it is to be a bit messy or not quite on time, or the way that things didn't quite turn out the way that we wanted. Now, of course, the other part of Achmach is about forgiveness. It's about acceptance. It's about understanding that we are who we are and we will we'll be who we will be with all our little ticks and quirks and all that kind of thing. And we have to accept them about ourselves and others. And that's what Achmach brings out. And so, on this day, one Achmach, I'd like to kind of like put forward the idea of this new wave of acceptance of ourselves and others, about this new ability to forgive, about going back to the basics, rebirthing ourselves and saying, you know what, I was trying to be too perfect, I'm just going to be me. And so, one Achmach can bring about this realization can bring about a new way of doing it. It can also be looking at a resurgence of forgiveness. 
you know, kind of sometimes we've become so focused, we've become so intent on something, we might have become blinkered from the essence of humanity that allows us to love. So perhaps it's going back to basics and saying, you know what, I don't care about what happened or like let's drop it so that we can move forward and recognize each other as true humans. For me, that is another thing which Achmach can do. Achmach people, I often feel, are the ones who show us how to do that. And so, one Achmach, a great day for a new forgiveness. Kind of like for refining that spirit of forgiveness within your heart. From one Achmach, we're then going to go to Tu Noch. So, Tu Noch, Noch, the mind, the brain, um, the one who solves problems, the one who comes up with the ideas. And the number two, representing duality, representing both sides of the story. And sometimes this is what we need. You know, we're going through this tracena of forgiveness. Now, are we looking at things? Are we trying to think things through from a unilateral position? Because sometimes that's not going to work. In fact, more than often, that's not going to work. It's only when we take into account both sides of the, in, of the information that we're actually going to be come up with a solution, which takes us towards, well, we'll see what it takes us towards in a moment. But it's understandable how you know, we need to think with both sides. This could also represent both sides of the brain. We could think of it through the artistic content, we could think of it through the logical content. We can think of it from both of those things at the same time. And perhaps this is what's going to give us the understanding of how to come up with the best answer. Now, I just mentioned that we'll see what it leads to in a minute, and what it leads to is 3 hash. Three Tihash, Tihash the healer, Tihash the obsidian blade, Tihash the one that leads to perfection, Tihash the one that cuts through to the truth. And where do we see it focused? We see it with the three, the inner world. So three Tihash is one of those combinations that I find very, very interesting and I really like three Tihash. The main reason that I get so excited about it is because it's about polishing the inner diamond. It's literally looking inside yourself for the truth. It's also about, I see Tihash as the bringer of peace. It's using that obsidian blade, using that, um, that sword to bring peace in its community. And here we see it with the number three. And so it's about bringing peace within the self. It's about understanding, right, okay, I'm going to cut this bit, I'm going to cut that bit, I'm going to accept that bit, I'm going to accept that bit. And it's about bringing out our true inner beauty through understanding kind of like what to cut, what to leave. And so 3 hash is a great day for those reflective moments, a great to get day to go within yourself and have a look at your own in a diamond as it were have a look at your own beauty and see what you might need to cut in order to refine what you might need to forgive in order to refine from t3 t hash we're then going into four kawok so kawok the storm kawok the rain kawok the feminine essence of healing the compassion and here we see it with the number four, representing the physical plane of existence, representing the four cardinal points, the, sun, the sunrise, midday, sunset, midnight. Our whole world is made up of fours. And so when we see this with Kawok, what I feel that we're seeing is the ability to bring this compassion into our physical world. Where would that be more fitting than, of course, in the Tresena of Achmach. We're looking at healing through compassion. We're looking at Kawok, the one who wants to bring the new into the world, who wants to bring the new birth into the world, the midwife to the resurrection of the maze. And where are we seeing it? Right here in the physical. So it's a great day to go out and work in physically healing things. It's a great day to help yourself or others 
to push through the things which might be holding them back from their regeneration using the essence of compassion. It's also a day, Kawok days often think about um, the Nawal Tawok, Kawok being kind of like tough love. It's, you know, it's not going to let you stay still. It's going to move you forward. And sometimes it might be a little bit close to the bone with what it has to talk about, what it has to say or what it has to reveal. But here this is about physically moving forward. And so sometimes we need the storm to wash away and prepare the ground for us to do so. From four Kawok, we're then going into five Achpu. So Achpu, the sun, Achpu, representing the resurrection of the maze, the, the regrowth of the maze. Achpu representing our spiritual path, our divine path. And here we see it connected with the number five. The number five representing work, representing putting our energy into it, representing putting our effort into it. And so, as such, when we see it like that, we understand that it's not going to come to us. It may present itself to us, but it's up to us to put our energy into it, to move forward on it. And so it's a great day to assess where you're putting your energy. It's a great day to reaffirm your spiritual path. It's a real great day to kind of like look for that divinity. But it also suggests that it's not just going to drop in your lap. You're going to have to put some energy into it. You're going to have to um, use your own drive to help it to move forward. Now, what I usually find is that with five days, the more energy that you put in, the greater the result that you get out is. So it's going to be well worth it. But you might find just, you know, like need a little bit of effort, need a little bit more of a push than usual. From five, Achpu, we're then going into six, Imosh. So Imosh, representing the dream world, representing the waters and the oceans. Imosh, representing the collective consciousness. And here we see it with the number six. Now, the number six can be seen as representing ultimate stability. And so it's a connection of the divine feminine, divine masculine manifestation into the physical realm. So this can be a very, very interesting day to call upon the upper world and the lower world to help you to manifest your dreams into reality. But the other thing which is very interesting about the number six is that it can represent family. Now, with Imosh representing the collective consciousness, we can understand how six Imosh may help us to feel very, very close to our families because it's literally like we're, we're picking up on the collective consciousness, the collective dream of our families around us. So it's a great day to really be in tune, to really be in harmony with your family, to help to manifest your dreams into reality. From six Imosh, we're then going into seven Ich. So seven Ich, Ich, the wind. Well, unfortunately, there's probably a little bit of wind noise going on on this mic, because I can't help that. It's windy here. Ich. The one that brings change, ik, the one who brings communication, the words which come from us. And the number seven, about choice, the standing on top of the pyramid, seeing your options. The number seven, also seeing about endings, finality. Sometimes we could call seven ik the final breath. Sometimes we could call it the final word. Sometimes we could see that it's very much just about choosing your words. Now here we are in the Trasena of Achmach and recognizing our humanity. Recognizing that the words that we choose shape our reality. Also recognizing that the words that we choose, kind of like sometimes they're the things that get us into trouble too, right? They might get us out of trouble because we might choose beautiful words which help to bring love, which help to connect us with the sensual. Sometimes we might choose words which are harsh. So seven eek might be a very good day to think about your choice of words. Think about the choice of words with regards to forgiveness, with regards to pardon. Think about your choice of words with regards to humanity, expression. 
I was talking about the the Tresena of Achmach being all about embracing ourselves and others as human beings. That choice of words is very important. Help us to grow and to help those around us to grow. Seven Eek could be a day for great inspiration because it's the inspired worth which comes from the divine breath. But it's up to you to choose whether how you want to use your words. From seven ik, we're then going into eight achabal. Eight achabal. So achabal, the nawal of the dawn and the dusk, the nawal of the twilight. Achabal, the nawal of conception, the nawal of new concepts, the nawal of bringing the dream into reality, right? It's about taking it from the dream world, the world of darkness, the night, into the day. The revelation, the bringing things into the light. And here we see it with the number eight, the wholeness. Now the number, number eight I can see is being the one and the seven brought together. And so when we're seeing one representing birth and the seven representing death, Beginnings and endings all in one place. The totality, the sum total. That's the wholeness of this process. It's bringing the whole essence from beginning to end. The whole concept from first inception to materialization. So Ay Akabal is certainly a great day to finally bring that concept into the world. It's kind of like, right, okay, now it's full, now it's ready to go. Here we have everything from beginning to end bundled into one um, moment. And so if you have a new concept to bring into the world, Ay Akabal is a great day to do it. It's ready. It's ready to pop. From eight Achabal, we're then going to move into nine Cat. Cat representing the bag, representing the carrying net. Cat representing all that we carry with us in life. Representing our attachments too. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And here it is with the number nine. The number nine representing the feminine. The number nine representing life itself. And so... When we see nine cat, this could be very much about having what we might call a sort out in your life, as would be befitting in the Tresena of Achmach, of course. Which connections are you holding on to that you can let go of? Which connections are helping you to sustain and, let's say, be human in your life? And maybe we could also look at it, if we're talking about life and we're talking about attachments and that kind of thing, what attachments do you have in your life that are stopping you from being the full human that you could be? Nine Cat may well bring those up. It may well also ask you, do you really want to hold on to this? It's time to let go of it. Release yourself move into your life and move into your kind of like full expression of humanity in your life. From nine cat, we're then going into ten can. So can, the Nawal of power and wisdom. Can can be seen as the sorcerer. Can can be seen as, you know, the one who runs the body lightning, the Kayapa through them. The one who creates illusions. But it can also be seen as the great teacher. Is the one who's here to share and empower their community through the wisdom that they have to share. Now, we can see that in particular today because we have it coupled with the number 10. The number 10 representing corporation, representing society, representing that connection. And so what day could there be that could be any better to share your wisdom with your community than 10 can? What day could better empower those around you than 10 can? It could also be seen as a day in which we share our wisdom in order to help our community to see through illusions. Now, those illusions may have led them to errors, as, you know, kind of like as is quite apparent during the Achmach Trasena. So perhaps if we share our wisdom, if we share our power, if we empower all of those around us, we can help to embrace our humanity and overcome the illusions that we might have been under. 
From 10 can, we're then going into 11 kame. Kame, death. Kame, transformation. Kame, facing our fears, facing our frights, living up to them, moving forward through them. And where are they coming from today? Well, they may be coming from everywhere. It may be quite a challenging day, quite honestly, because the 11 sort of picking things up from all over the place. We don't know where the next one is going to come from. They may be things which come out of left field, completely unexpected for us. But that's what 11 Kame is here to do. I often see that 11s are rather, rather like the idea of how to become adaptable because we become adaptable by facing the unknown, by facing challenges that we weren't expecting. And so 11 Kame, well Kame is very much about the challenges as well. And so it wouldn't be surprising to find a fear that you were unaware of coming up on 11 Kame. But it's come up at this time in order to overcome it, in order to accept it, in order to accept your humanity and others within this Trasenra of Achmach. From 11 Kame, we're then moving into 12 Kirch. 12 Kirch, representing the wilderness. Well, this isn't quite the wilderness, is it? This is a groomed garden, but it's a connection with nature nonetheless. Kech reminding us to get out into the fresh air, reminding us to get out into the greenness or the pinkness, as the case may be, to reconnect with nature, to reconnect with the beauty of nature. Kech refueling us, bringing us strength. And here, we see it with the number 12. Number 12 representing all of life's experiences brought together in one place. So with 12 Kech, we can really see that we're talking about how our experiences in the natural world have brought us strength. How that strength, that determination, and that purpose that we draw upon from what we find in the natural world can also help us to guide others. Because Kech also represents spiritual leadership. And here we see that that is going to be coming from all of our life experiences. So what can you bring to your people, to yourself, to the people around you? The, where you draw on that. Now we're in that Trasenna of Achmach. And we know this is about forgiveness. And of course I think the understanding of humanity and forgiveness is a big part of that spiritual leadership anyway. But here it's suggesting, right, okay, go back and think about your life experiences because let's say that we might not have always been as perfect as we are now, right? You know, we probably had those things that go on in our past and perhaps we can use those experiences from our past to help to guide ourselves and others around us as we finish up this Trasenna of Achmach. And where do we finish it? We finish it on 13 Anil. Anil representing the golden, the ripening, the yellowing, bringing things to their final fruition when the maize comes to its yellowness, its greatest readiness, ripe and ready to pick. And this is what we're all going to. You know, kind of like if we're seen as the, you know, kind of like there's the people for that were born in the, the corn sun, as it were. This is for us to ripen as well. The greatest illumination and for me this is the greatest um, let's say possibility for Achmach because that's where we're going the number 13 of course representing the ancestors representing spirit representing our connection with them when we see Anil we see something which is joyful we see something which is ripe we see something which is abundant so we could see 13 Anila's celebration of the abundance that comes from our ancestors. But one of the things I, you know, I consider Anil to be the most joyful of all of the Nawalas. And here it's turned up as high as it can get. This really could be a day of celebration. That's what we get to when we've dropped guilt, blame or shame. That's the whole point of the Achmach Trasena. Where do we get to? Get to the highest state of happiness. 
the highest state of maturity. So 13 Carnil could certainly be a day to celebrate that, to celebrate your ancestors, to celebrate life, to celebrate your own maturity. But they also say with Khanil, just to be a little bit aware that Khanil can sometimes overdo it as well. So just to like uh, keep that in mind. But I think it's a beautiful day to be finishing the Achmach Trasenaron because it really goes to show us the joy that can come when we've gone through all that process of forgiveness. So thanks once again for, for listening, for watching. I hope that's been interesting for you. And I look forward to seeing you next time for the Tresena of Toch. Thank you.